Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to my second channel video. Let's talk about politics around the world, and let's start by mentioning the United States of America, because if you follow the election procedures there, and you're not from that country, you might be confused as to how right-wing and honestly, uh, you know, right-leaning a lot of the political positions the leaders take up are, and to how alienating and strange the discourse all seems to be. A common thought is that even the left-wing party in America, the Democratic Party, is not actually left by European standards, it's actually a center to center-right party. It's something you'll hear parroted a lot on the internet, especially by people who are quite left-wing by the US standards. They're like, actually, there's only two right-wing parties in America and there's no left voices. Um, and that's assuming, uh, that's making the assumption that there is this universal left-right spectrum across the world. Something that is so tempting to think, because when I look at maps like this, it's so, so, so interesting, right? This is a map showing the political position of every country's ruling party in August 2020. And as you can see, it shows, uh, you know, going from, uh, you know, the far left to the far right, it shows the political position that the ruling party officially has. So the UK has a conservative party who are center right. Um, Canada has the liberal party, which is center left. And we can go all around the world and talk about them, but you can see that like the political spectrum on this map basically goes from far left in the case of like China, um, or Laos or uh, Venezuela to far right in the cases of Brazil and uh, Iran. And um, although there's a very interesting argument here that like is is uh, you know is Brazil far right? Like is my first instinct like you know everyone knows that like uh, you know Bol Bolsonaro the current president is like quite right wing, but is far right really the correct definition of it? Because it's interesting the party is even called the Social Liberal Party, and it's because it used to be a center party that was kind of taken over by the current president and is now considered to be far right, but is it really, you know, by Wikipedia at least, but do you trust Wikipedia because they get their sources from just like the world? Is is far right something that is objective or is it something you get described as and then you take? Because again, no far right or far left parties generally describe themselves as fringe politics. They're like, no, this is just the new normal now. They're trying to shift uh, the definition of things. So it's it's very interesting to look at the uh, the fact that like, yeah, even in the countries that are on the furthest ends of the spectrum, there's a debate about like, are they really far right or have they just changed the definition of center right or right wing. Uh, there's these very interesting arguments about each individual country, but also the problem of this map is it pre-assumes that left and right is this universal thing that exists everywhere, which it does to some extent, but let me explain more by talking about um, the fact that, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I live in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Here's proof if you ignore the part of this uh, you know, flag that isn't on a uh, that is on a bird, uh, and just ignore the rest of the bird. You can see I live in the United Kingdom, and here the way politicians talk is very different to what you'll hear in the United States. For instance, even our centre-right party, the closest thing we have to the Republicans, um, our, our right-wing party uh, has never will, will never be uh, against. Uh, universal health care. We have the NHS in this country and it's loved by most people and so even the center-right government while they're talking about uh, you know all the traditional small government things, small government will always generally include uh, the NHS and government health care in their model whereas the left-wing party in the United States, um, the Democrats, uh, generally speaking besides some voices in the corner of the party, generally don't advocate for universal health care. They talk about limiting private health care in various ways um, and so that means that both parties in the US will talk about uh, private healthcare, whereas both parties in the UK talk about public healthcare, which is weird because surely private healthcare is a right care, right wing thing, and uh, you know, and so like <laughs> it's it's even more interesting because uh, therefore, if you use that piece of information, the UK Conservatives are to the left of the American Democrats. Something backed up by this article I found from the Atlantic: How conservative would British Conservatives be in the United States? And as you can see, they take uh, three columns: the Republican Party of the United States, the Democratic Party of the United States under Obama. Uh, American parties change a lot faster and harder than uh, most other countries, so that's why they clarified that. And then there's the UK Conservatives under David Cameron. That was the last or two leaders ago now, I guess. Um, but again, it's the same party. It's shifted slightly to the right, you could argue. Um, but still, it's very interesting to look at the winning uh, center-right party in the UK and how um, the, uh, again, like, look at their position. It's more similar to the Democratic Party on abortion. When you look at death penalty, they are to the left of both the Democrats and the Republicans. Same-sex marriage, um, again, it's something that they have more in common with the Democratic Party. Um, it's surprising to a lot of people when they learn that the Conservatives in the UK were the party that legalized same-sex marriage, um, like the Democratic Party was in the US. Again, this was done before it was legally in the country, and so that's very interesting. The UK is 
lining up with our conserv our center right is lining up with the American center left. Uh, national healthcare policy support support uh, then oppose for the Republicans. Um, renewable energy support support carbon tax support support stricter border security support not a priority, which is a interesting way to put it. But um, yeah, if you look at all of that stuff, the only places where the UK conservatives line up with the uh, American Republicans are on uh, heavy cuts to government where it is supported in both cases and on stricter border security where it's supported in both cases. And so therefore, you can make a pretty convincing argument, as this uh, article tries at the very least, is that the conservatives aren't conservative by the American sense, or that the Democrats aren't left-wing uh, by the British sense. And that therefore, the United States is to the right of the, uh, the UK, which is to the left. And therefore, all of Europe is this socially liberal paradise, and American is this right-wing uh, hellhole, or whatever case people are trying to make. But I think this is just missing the nuance that, uh, uh, two, two strong nuances. One is that uh, every country has a different starting point. I mean, if you take, uh, you know, if you take the furthest left countries of Venezuela and you add a little bit of right to that, you're still going to be very left wing. Um, whereas if you take a very right wing country um, and you add a little bit of left, you're still going to be very right wing. Um, but it's also missing the nuance that like the political spectrum and what it means will vary from country to country. I mentioned, for instance, that in the UK, healthcare is uh, nationalized. It is a very interesting example of... Um, Again, and it's 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 been like that forever, um, and it's one of the most left-wing systems in the world. But if you look at most uh, universal healthcare uh, systems that people point out as being why America doesn't have it, uh, they're not actually fully universal. Uh, for for example, um, if we go to Japan, Japan's healthcare system is 70% paid for by the government, and the rest is this universal healthcare insurance system. And so it's to the left of the American system, but it's also to the right of the British system. Wow! But I thought. Japan was the the socialist. I mean, no one should actually think that, but some people do. Um, you know, like the you know the reason the trains run in uh, like trains in the UK suck or trains in America suck, and trains in Japan are great, and it's because trains in Japan are run by the government. Oh, actually, that's that's a lie. Train trains are run by a private private company in Japan, uh, a profit stock company that took over the assets uh, corporations of the formerly government-owned uh, Japan National Railways. And so actually it's private companies that run amazing railway in Japan, while it's public companies that run the bad, air quotes, railway in the United States. Or it's actually a quasi-public corporation, but all of the shares are um, owned by the Secretary of Transportation. So, I mean, you tell me uh, whether that's a thing. Because actually, um, yeah, and, and that, you know, like, even though America is this right-wing country and Japan is is uh, less to the right of it, um, in, in various different ways, it's going to be different. The status quo for America is private healthcare and public, tra you know, trains. Whereas the, uh, the, the reverse is true in Japan and the reverse is true in the UK. It is fully nationalized healthcare and uh, until COVID, uh, fully privatized trains. Very interesting distinction there. Um, and in the same way, uh, guns are a fact of life in the United States uh, and guns are also a fact of life in the UK, but people don't know about it. So we pretend we have a uh, really good anti-gun laws. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's that's where they get that that's that's the real trick. Just convince people your laws are different. But um, for instance, here's another example. In Germany, um, Germany is a center-right country. If we go back to our wonderful uh, wonderful map right here, it, it is a nice map, right? Uh, Germany is a center-right country. Uh, however, um, one of the things that is just consistent across most parties there is that if you are a Christian, you pay a uh, a Christian tax to the uh, national government, which they use to fund churches. That is how heavily ingrained religion is in their culture, which is incredibly foreign and confusing uh, to me living in the United Kingdom. Like, what the heck? You pay a Christian tax? I mean, I would just not register as a Christian, right? Even if you were one. Um, but and, and they're like, the, the, the debate in Germany is not about should we repeal the Christian tax? It's about should we have like a, you know, like a Muslim tax as well? And then that can go to fund mosques in the country because, you know, rather than having mosques be funded by outside countries. There's really interesting uh, debates that are being had because honestly, here's what everyone misses about politics. Politics, it can be a fun game looking at all these ideologies and thinking, yes, I perfectly believe in paleoconservatism. I've heard that term before, but I have no clue what that means. I'm going to level with you. I'm a, I'm a Marxist Leninist. I think that um, everything should be run by the, you know, like, <laughs> um, you know, like uh, some people look at this and they're like, yes, I pick an ideology and then I apply it to everything that happens in the world. For instance, you know, like, um, 
and like, uh, but most people aren't actually following that. They're actually, uh, they have some vague tendencies one way or the other, and they approach every problem with a unique solution. I mean, uh, for example, healthcare is very expensive in America and doesn't have great outcomes. How do you, uh, you know, approach that with a solution? Some people uh, talk about it as a nationalization thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But people generally aren't just like, yeah, I'm just gonna nationalize random industries. Let's, lash let's nationalize supermarkets. I mean, why not, right? Let's let's take them into public hands. People, again, you, you get weird people online that do that all the time. Like, actually, if you think about it, being asked to stand in class is this ableist, uh, you know, problem that we all have. And it's, uh, you know, my nationalist syndicalist government would fix that. Um, people do this all the time online because it's fun and it's a form of political debatery, but actual politics in the real world generally tends to be a, a, a much more interesting thing. And uh, so that, that the, the reason, in my opinion, that politics varies so much across countries is partly because we have different starting points, partly because there are different solutions that line up based on the political parties of the time, but also I think another very key thing that we're missing here is the fact that actually, yeah, other c countries have different histories and therefore a different set of roots to draw on. Um, if we look at, for example, the United States, the Wild West, like, you know, this it's like this fantasy thing if you live in the UK, like, yeah, that's not a real time. That was like a long time. No, this is like a hundred something years ago that you live in a town and it's like, how can you be left wing in a town like this where there's like 10 people all, all try, you know, like, how, you know, like, or how can you be right wing? Can you have oppressive government? Can you have, um, you know, like, can you have anything there? No, it's a, it's a very different, uh, mindset. If you look at this map of population in the US, you can see that in 1876 it looked like this, but it's so different now, except no, it's not. Uh, besides like uh, California and parts of Washington, the West Coast is still basically desolate. Um, the, uh, the United States has a very different uh, current status quo in terms of like where people live, but also a very different history that took people to get there. Um, that of course means that like, you know, for instance, there is a great, um, th there's a great na nationwide system in Switzerland uh, that has existed forever, and they've got trains going across the whole country. You can buy a ticket for a surprisingly cheap price. It's a really cool thing about uh, being Swiss and living in Switzerland um, that is just, of course, alien and foreign to live. If people living in the United States were like, yeah, I don't really, I don't really, we don't, we, you, you can't really do the same system with a country that much bigger, with that different a history, with, you know, like it's lining up with railways being so different. Uh, with even its railway system, even if you wanted to make public, uh, you know, like make it really easy to buy a nationwide public transport ticket. It's like, what would a nationwide public transport look like? It looks like this. It covers, um, just as a fun fact, it covers 46 states and three Canadian provinces. Uh, obviously it doesn't cover Alaska and Hawaii, but it also just doesn't go to Wyoming or South Dakota. It's like, yeah, actually this wouldn't be as exciting as looking at the Swiss rail network. And so like, you know, nationalizing the network doesn't magically make service go to South Dakota. I mean, unless you, yeah, yeah you, you get the point that I'm trying to make right here, right? That every country has a different political compass because it has a different set of uh, you know, places that it exists in at a given point in time. You can argue from your political compass all day, every day, um, but the, the actual reality is, in my opinion, is that left and right is all relative to the here and the now. I think that even if you are a, um, this is, I, again, I, I can never stop looking at this map and being like, huh, there's libertarian socialism next to libertarian Marxism, and then there's market socialism over here, and then there's liberal socialism, and then there's green liberalism, and now we've moved into the center. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's um, let, let's move on from uh, this very interesting, uh, you know, set of things here um, to talking about the fact that, like, of course, um, the, the the problem that people always have when they say that. American parties are quite right-wing compared to Europe, or that Europe's right-wing is left-wing compared to America, which is just as valid. No one ever says that, because again, it's always left-wing people on the internet trying to argue that actually being super far left is normal. Um, but like, uh, you know, that that's also true. All of European and American politics are incredibly left-wing compared to that of the Middle East. Like, wait, why is no one having an argument about whether women can go to the cinema alone? What if they see another man? What if another man sees them? You ever consider these things? You know, these are these are the norm in certain parts of the world, and they, uh, no matter what your party is, are very different. And I don't, I, I don't know how to quite word it better. But um, yeah, another interesting thing is uh, obviously in Europe we have different political party systems. Here's a really like this is the opinion polls for the French presidential election. Look how many parties there are here. It's it literally ranges from. Uh, communist four all the way to so far right the front national look like their front national 
Front National, I think it is, look like they're the, you know, like, <laughs> you know, not not even that by comparison. Uh, the, same same with Denmark. Like, they have so many parties, they abbreviate them by, like, one letter, and there's just, there's too many to keep track of. I don't know how anyone even, even tries to understand Danish politics. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to understand it. Um... The, uh, the, the end point I wanted to make here is that on the broad points, left and right are objective. On the points of like, um, okay, sorry, here, here's the map I wanted to show you. On the fact that uh, left wing and right wing people uh, have this base idea that comes from the same place. For instance, uh, generally speaking, um, you know, like for, as an example, both left and right wing people believe in freedom and equality. I, most human beings believe in freedom and equality. However, would you make the argument that Freedom, uh, you cannot have equality, you know, like the, the truest form of equality is having freedom. If you can't have your own freedom to do things that's not equal, whereas you can make the reverse argument on the left of like, no, you cannot have, um, you, you, you cannot have uh, a freedom unless everyone's equ equal. If you don't have equality, you don't have freedom because if uh, you have freed freedom, but then everyone's very differently equal, then some people have more freedom than others. And some people say, no, 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 no. You need to have freedom so that people can, find their own equality in society. Uh, is it, you know, like, uh, because if, if it, it goes into so many, there's so many interesting levels of what makes someone left or right, but like, you know, should you be nurturing of your love and try to, in, you know, improve that way? Or should you be uh, tough with your love and try to instill moral strength into something, uh, build some character? Should you have discipline and, uh, you know, like, uh, built into you? Or should you, instead of having discipline, uh, have reflection and empathy and openness? Uh, the, there's, there's so many of these different uh, questions and, <laughs> that, again, I, I'm not even fully uh, qualified to dive into all of them, but we use... Um, the, the, you know, and if you look back at this article, the one that started this whole thing, if you look at the big broad things, generally speaking, the right wing is the same in each country. Generally speaking, the right wants to cut government and give people more money to spend themselves. The left wants to take more money for the collective good. Um, does that follow on from the logic of like, yeah, um, you know, like if you want to have uh, self-reliance, then you should be spending your own money. Whereas if you want to have a more, um, you know, like a, a more reflective society that helps out with equality, then you need to use the collective money to do that. Um, you know, do you want to live in a rural area where you won't be bothered by people, but you've got to deal with a lot of stuff yourself? If your boiler goes out, you'll freeze to death or whatever. Uh, or do you want to live in an urban area where you rely on other people and you give back to them in exchange? Uh, via your taxes or your rent or whatever, whichever way you see that. But like, um, these are the very, um, <laughs> the, these these are the very complex questions that lead to actual politics. Um, when, uh, you know, like uh, the United States uh, pr approaches a problem, let, let's say it's the exact same problem, um, they're approaching it from this mindset of if you're on the left, maybe we could solve that with government and restricting private business. And if you're on the right, maybe we could solve that with restricting government and encouraging private business. Um, and that is going to be true across a lot of the world in the very broadest sense. It's just the specifics change so much because, again, uh, when healthcare outcomes suck in the UK, as maybe they've done because we've had a global pandemic um, where you realize that having, you know, like the government be the people who are in control of what people can do on a day-to-day -day basis, but also in control, and also being responsible for when healthcare goes good or bad, has some really great incentives if you want this wonderful lining up of, um, you know, healthcare with our collective rights. But if you want to dislink our collective rights from our healthcare, you can approach more like the US, where it's like, let your local city decide. There is no nationwide policy on COVID because that is a localized decision. Having small communities decide things is a right that goes one place, place and it's something that goes the other way, the other place. And you can see that uh, shift across, and, and that's why ruling party parties are important. They're slowly shifting the course of a nation to the right or to the left. I mean, um, but, but the truth is it gets way more complex. Also, you're not, sorry, just one last thing. China is technically a far left ruling country uh, party. Uh, the, the CCP, the Communist Party of China, is a far left organization and there aren't elections and all that stuff. Uh, but China is one of the more capitalist countries in the world in lots of ways. They they kind of allow capitalism on the low in ways that you wouldn't in other countries. And so even trying to be like, well, you know, at least we can all agree we're not communist like China. And it's like, well, commun the communism in China hasn't really been communism in a while. Um, and also, you know, like, oh, well, it's the capitalist West. The capitalism in, in the West isn't true capitalism. Like, 40% of the economy is controlled by the government. 45% uh, to 50% in countries like Belgium. Is that 
Really? You know, like, is that part of the principles? And the truth is, yeah, every country has a different stance that we're building over time by the consensus of the people that live there, because the, the real thing you should be defending is the fact that at least it's the people living in a country or a community or a city or a state or a province or whatever that are deciding the rules for the people that live there. That's the ultimate thing, right? And is that what we can all agree on? Or is this a 20 minute video ranting about uh, politics and how it varies? You let me know what you think in the comments down below. Here's a map of something random. Okay, I, I've got lots of these random links. We're gonna go through some of them right now. Uh, people really enjoyed uh, finding this in my browse tabs. So in case this video wasn't offensive enough for you, let's go through. Um, uh, imagine I called you all of these words right here. Um, yeah, you don't like that, do you? Respond to respond to these. You, you, this is one of my favorite Wikipedia pages because just like, why does it need to exist? You know, wait, wait, wait. If you're if you're American and you're offended, you're a Don Merkin. You are a Yankee. And if you're British and you're offended, then you know what I think you are. You're a you're a limey pom, <laughs> or a porridge wog. That feels not that feels not okay to say. Um, you're a you're a you're a prod. You're a continentali, an it. Uh, you're a you're a. Ooh, we're getting back into the ones I can't say out loud. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it was interesting in some way, uh, and it wasn't just a 20 minute long rant. But if it was, you know, what? support these. Go by going to patreon.com slash toycat. I shared the map there to see what people's thoughts were. And I thought it was so interesting to to read, like, yeah. Um, I, I, I thought Way Back History had a really good comment. They're like, yeah, there's there's a lot of mixed things here. If like, if you call Norway center left, uh, I'll actually center right here. If you call Sweden center left, they have a monarchy still. So, you know, like, uh, isn't that quite far to the right of the United States, which is a republic? Um, and yeah, you can make you can you can mix words and make arguments all day. The only true things that define left and right are the values that underlie you. Do you care more about um, you know like uh, is it about do you do you do things for your country because of duty and honor, or do you do things for your country because you care about the people in it? Is do you work because that is how you survive and you have to, or do you work because you're trying to uh, you know like uh, you're trying to do your a bit and give back, you know? Should you should you have to enjoy your thing? Because of course, like you're trying to you're trying to make a more loving, better world, or should you do your thing because you're trying to make the world work? Can things should things be the best they can be? Or should we make sure that we preserve them so they don't get worse because we're so close to that? There's there's so many different ways, you know, like is is uh you know like uh is is the individual more important? You know, is it is the good of the many worth sacrificing the good of the one? Or is the good of the many uh, worth ignoring until you can make sure you get the good of the one locked down? Is economic freedom more important than personal freedom? Uh, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Um, should we care about the workers more? Should we care about the owners of the company? I mean, uh, the owners did have to put their own money in. Should we, you know, like endlessly we can talk left and right, left and right, left and right. But ultimately, it's these base values that mean that even if you did actually take, uh, with rare exceptions, if you took a Republican from the United States, they would be a conservative in the UK. If you took a Labour Party person in the UK, they would, actually wait, we have to flip that. If you take a Democrat from the US, they probably would um, have a lot in common with the Labour Party, the left-wing party of the UK, and a Republican from the, uh, a conservative from the UK, the right wing, would have more in common with the Republicans of the US because they approach issues with the bent of those different underlying values, or oh, these different underlying values, and that's what makes things so uh, different in so many ways. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it, um, because I'll see you all next time. Unless I don't, of course. See, look, I'm not seeing you right now. It's a very good joke. That's why you come here, and that's why you go to patreon.com slash toycat to support more of these terrible videos. Goodbye. That's right, I got 26 patrons now. I think this is my third third goodbye, so... Um, how's the weather? It's pretty, pretty sunny here today. You'll be pleased to know. Talking about the weather, that's the real political compass. Anyway, yeah, see you next time. Bye.